Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at techniques for cloth simulation in relation to character design and animation. This is a follow up to my last video on cloth simulation in Blender 2.8, which was quite well received. I want to say thank you for watching it, it's really nice to be able to provide interesting content and see you discussing various ideas in the comments. So in this video we're going to be talking about techniques with a specific focus on collision and motion. Strictly speaking, we're going to be looking at how we can connect cloth to a character as well as viable methods for making it interact and move in relation to the surface. To demonstrate this, I've created a robot character for us to use. There's a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, this character doesn't use bones or have an armature. All of the joints are based on a parent-child hierarchy, which means the techniques we talk about in this video will be applicable anywhere rather than strictly to rigged meshes. Secondly, the harsh angles of the robotic surface will also help to demonstrate some of the shortcomings of collision detection in physics simulations. I also have a bit more experience with robotics than traditional character animation, so this is a more suitable angle for me. You can grab a copy of the resources and demonstrations shown in this video from the links in the description. Just like before, there are two packages, a paid one and a free one. The free one gives you blend files with simple demonstrations for all of the concepts, whereas the paid one will give you all of the artistic resources. We're going to start off by talking about collision. Having cloth interact with the character is quite important, but if we're not careful then we can end up with all sorts of heavy performance issues and artifacts. A choice needs to be made as to how accurately you want the cloth to interact with the surface of the character. In regards to this, I would say that there are three main approaches we can take. First of all we have full collision, which is where every surface on the character is physically reactive. This is the equivalent of giving each component object its own collider in the physics settings. The second method is to use collision shapes, which are invisible objects that define a boundary around parts of the character, preventing cloth from touching the surface. They are usually comprised of simple geometry, which helps with performance. As well as this, they can be parented to bones or other objects which allow them to move with the body. The third method is to use a single collision shape that acts as a low poly version of the entire character, rather than using multiple individual shapes isolated to different areas. The main side note about this is that you lose mobility on characters that are not armature based. For characters with bones, the lower poly shape can be made to share the original rig and just be kept invisible from the renderer. Moving from methods 1 to 3, you might lose out in mobility, but you would make up for it with an increase in performance speed. In a perfect physically simulated system, method 1 is always going to be the ideal because it should give us the most realistic results, but there are several factors that get in the way which make this less viable. For example, the accuracy of collisions in cloth simulations can quite often deviate depending on the density of the geometry. What this means is that if we want to experiment in real time with lower density cloth objects, we will likely run into a large number of collision errors, and as the simulation tries to solve the vertex positions, it will get progressively slower and inefficient, as we can see here. Notice how the low density geometry struggles to figure out where it should be. This is one of the reasons why I've chosen a hard surface character so we can see how poorly the simulation behaves on a surface with harsh angles. So this brings us on to the main point here. If you have a detailed object that you want cloth to interact with, trying to use full collision isn't always the best option, especially if you ideally want some real-time control over how the cloth behaves. This becomes especially important if you want to simulate the cloth around a moving object, like an animated character. The best compromise for this particular character is to go with method 2, where we create simplified shapes around major areas of the character to act as collision boundaries. This principle of using simplified shapes rather than actual mesh information for the sake of performance and to prevent strange physical behaviours applies all across the digital 3D space. This is why modern game engines will often give you built-in functionality for generating collision cubes, spheres or capsules to surround the mesh. In the case where more detail is required, some may even provide the option to generate a convex shell from the mesh, which more accurately suits the original shape than a simple primitive. Now to demonstrate this, what I've done here is created a series of simple shapes that roughly describe the silhouette of our robot character. They have been parented to the different body parts so that they will move if I pose the character. I can keep these invisible so that we don't see them while the simulations are running. As well as this, I have also given the base that our character stands on a collision shape of their own. If I create a simple subdivided plane to act as our cloth and let it fall over our character, we can see how it appropriately interacts as it falls without intersecting with the meshes in strange ways. The performance while doing this is also much better than before. And of course once it's calculated we can watch it back at a silky smooth speed. So what this gives us is a nice platform for making external cloth structures that will also interact with the shape of the character. These shapes are movable with the joints and can be made as children to any other object or bone, meaning that if we animate the character they will follow appropriately. 
So now we've talked about collision, we're going to move on to motion, meaning how to get the cloth to attach to different parts of the character and follow it while it's moving around. There are a few ways to do this, making use of pinning, parent-child relations and hooks. We'll also briefly take a look at using vertex weights with bones. If you create a vertex group with all of the vertices you want to stay in place and assign it as the active pin group in the cloth physics settings, then what you can do is make that cloth object a child of another object, such as a body part of the character. This can be a regular object or a bone. What you will notice is that as you move the parent object around in real time, then the cloth will move with it. One thing to keep in mind though is that Blender is baking this cloth simulation result as an animation, which means that when the timeline plays back, we will see where the cloth moved to even if the parent object is not in the right place anymore. You can reset the animation by changing one of the cloth behavior properties in the physics menu. Another method for moving cloth around is to use hooks. Hooks are useful because they allow us to have a piece of cloth connected to multiple other objects at the same time. Imagine something like a cape that follows behind a character, where you need different corners of the cloth piece to connect to different parts of the character. The shoulders may not always be in line with each other, and as such the corners need to be hooked to them independently. The way to do this that provides the most flexibility is to create empty objects at the positions where you want the cloth to hook to. Some game engines also use hook-like pinning systems for cloth simulation, so if you export the empty objects as part of your character file, then you can recycle their positions already set up in the hierarchy. To use hooks, you need to make use of the hook modifier. You also need to make sure that the hook modifiers are above the cloth modifier in the stack. In the hook modifier settings, you can specify the target object you want to hook the cloth to, as well as the specific group of vertices you want to stay in place. So if you wanted two different corners hooked in separate places, you would create two vertex groups, one for each corner, and assign the specific vertices you want to stay in place. But as well as this, you should also create a pin group for the cloth physics settings which contains all of the vertices you want to hook. This group tells the physics settings to keep those vertices in place when the simulation is running. So for my cape demonstration, in the end, I end up with three different vertex groups for the cloth object. One for the left corner hook modifier, one for the right, and then one that contains all of the appropriate vertices for the cloth pinning settings. What I've got here is a demonstration for using hooks with our robot. You can see that as I rotate the upper torso, the corners of the cloth object adjust their positions appropriately. As well as this, you can see how I can move the empty hook objects around independently and how the simulation reacts accordingly. Another way to connect cloth to objects is to make use of bones with vertex weights. This will give you freedom to animate the cloth using bones as handles. You could also set this up to work as an extension of a pre-existing armature, such as in the case of video game characters. Like hooks, using bones with vertex weights will allow you to connect different areas of the cloth independently. Just to demonstrate here, I've set up a piece of cloth with a single bone, where I've painted a gradient from a high to low weight value for the vertices. As well as being used for the bone, the vertex group is also used for the cloth pinning. Note how when we simulate, the physics reacts to the fall off of the weight value. Remember, you can grab a copy of these resources from the links in the description so you don't have to build it all yourself. Just like in the last video, there are two packages, a paid one and a free one. The free package will give you simple demonstration blend files without the character, whereas the paid package will give you all of the resources seen in this video, including all of the character files. So following on from this, what I did was set myself the task of creating an animation with our robotic mascot, incorporating the different techniques that we've covered in these last two videos about cloth simulation in Blender 2.8. That involves using a range of force types to get different surface effects, using pinning and hooks to connect cloth elements to different parts of the character, and using collision shapes to get physical reactions with the surface. So this is what I've ended up with. As you can see, everything is working responsively. Thanks to the nice viewport in Blender 2.8, we can take a look at what's happening in terms of the wireframe as well. And of course, like before, I can take control points like the hooks and manipulate the simulation in real time. And if I freeze frame, we can capture a nice piece of artwork. We can always add more subdivision surface modifiers to the cloth pieces afterwards to add more geometry. This final blend file comes included in the paid resources so you can dissect it and see how everything works. Now that should wrap it up for this video. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe and ring that bell. Feel free to also join our Discord server and follow me on social media to stay up to date. Links for everything can be found in the description. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.